Hello everyone and welcome back to another Figurehead Reviews video, and today we are taking a look at the Marvel Legends Doppelganger, part of the Molten Man Build-A-Figure wave. Here we have Doppelganger displayed in the front window with his Build-A-Figure piece, and at the bottom we do have Doppelganger Spider-Man for the name, but just Doppelganger. On the side we have some pretty cool artwork there, Doppelganger showing off his six arms and his razor sharp teeth, and that is going to be the same on both sides. On the back, we do have an expanded shot of that artwork, along with a pretty long read-up. An evil, mindless duplicate of Spider-Man infused with supernatural energy by the Dima Goblin. The six-armed doppelganger has deadly claws and can shoot razor-sharp webbing. And then down in the middle there, we do have all the other figures needed in this wave to complete the Molten Man Build-A-Figure. At the bottom, we do have the UPC code, so you can check with your local retailer to see if they have this in stock. But enough about that, let's get this open and take a look at Doppelganger. And here is Doppelganger outside of his packaging. And, you know, when we got the six-armed Spider-Man figure, I knew a Doppelganger figure would be inevitable. Uh, the downside is not a lot of us, myself included, are the biggest fans of that body sculpt that they use for the six-armed Spider-Man. So getting a Doppelganger figure is awesome. However, the lack of waist articulation and using that uh, old six-arm Spidey mold, uh, that is probably the biggest disappointment with it. Uh, really, waist articulation is probably the biggest thing that I want out of this figure. But I will say that getting a doppelganger figure is something that I wanted because we're getting more and more figures for the Maximum Carnage story arc, and I really want to make a a display with all of those characters. So now that we got Doppelganger, I think we need Shriek still, and then uh, maybe Carrion. Uh, and I think we're kind of getting most of the secondary players uh, already done. So uh, I'm happy that we got this figure, and it doesn't look terrible. Uh, the face sculpt is kind of weird. We'll get more into that. Um, but I do think it's a pretty cool looking figure. Now, when standing straight up, Doppelganger is coming in at 6 and 1 8 inches tall, which makes him about 15.6 centimeters, which I feel like is actually a little bit on the short side for a Spider-Man clone, I guess we'll call it. Um, but uh, it's still good. I mean, he's at least 6 inches tall, so the scale is decent. He does not come with any additional accessories other than just his Build-A-Figure piece. So with that being said, let's just jump in, take a look at the sculpt and paint here on Doppelganger. And getting up close here, we can see a decent enough looking head sculpt. I don't know if I'm a big fan of that mouth. The teeth, I don't know if I just like how they look. I kind of would have appreciated something closer to like the spider carnage head maybe. This one feels like it's a little too big for the body. I mean, then again, it is a mutated six-armed, you know, creature, but uh, it still just feels kind of off, but it's not too bad. But if you look at it, this one's got a lot of, it's not marbling, but you can see just a lot of the swirls and stuff of the plastic, a lot of the lines from the mold. But uh, yeah, that's weird. But otherwise, I suppose it's not terrible. We do have this darker red throughout the uh, spider suit and even the darker blue as well. So it's a bit dark uh, of a character. Uh, looking at the paint on the spider logo on the chest, not bad. Came out okay. How about on the back? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, it's all right. Um, but the rest of this is something that we've seen before in terms of just being able to see some of the sculpted detail there uh, on the figure. We saw it with the six-armed Spider-Man. So that is going to be the same. Now, we do have uh, kind of an odd mix of hands, in my opinion. I sort of wish it was a little more even. So we get two open hands on this side and one fisted hand. And we get those nice, gross, monster, three-finger hands. And then on this side, it alternates. Uh, we get two fisted hands and one open hand. Now, you can pop these off and mix and match them if you want to, um, but you, you are always going to have two open hands over here and two fisted hands over there. So I kind of wish maybe it would have been something even, whether we had done more fisted, more uh, open hands, whatever, um, or maybe even thrown in a second set so we had you know a fisted hand, an open hand, and maybe something else. I don't know. Um, and then going down, one of the cool things about this figure is these big monster feet make him pretty easy to pose uh, without feeling like he's going to tip over. Like you can have him leaning forward quite a ways and uh, it does pretty good there. Uh, we don't actually have any peg holes at the bottom though. So 
uh, that that's I guess odd I'd say, but you know you'd have to put it where you would have the uh, the disc uh, porting in there. So I can understand why it doesn't have it. And like I said, though, it's pretty stable as is. Now looking at the articulation, so you of course have a head that can go all the way around. He can look down a little ways and look up actually quite a ways. He can look very far up as a matter of fact. And then as far as the articulation on all the arms go, uh, they can all go up a fair amount. Eh, yeah, right about there. So, yeah, you can get them all straight out if you want to. They all have a bicep swivel, double-jointed elbow, and I did forget to mention those ugly red pegs on all of those. Ugh. But double-jointed elbows, and then you do have rotation and a hinge on all the wrists. As mentioned, there is no type of waist articulation, no ab crunch, no nothing. I get why there's no ab crunch, but I feel like you could still have a waist cut there. Uh, you get a little bit of a gap here on that leg, so that might vary from figure to figure. We have legs that can come apart pretty far, though. Can kick forward, also pretty far. Backwards, not much. Upper thigh cut, double jointed knees. Then we do have a boot cut, and then hinge and ankle pivot. And that is going to do it for this review, everyone. So overall, I think this is a figure still worth getting simply because it is another Spider-Man villain. For me personally, it's very much worth getting because, again, I want to have that Maximum Carnage display. I can see why some people might be turned off by it, though. Lack of articulation and the sculpt does seem kind of wonky with that head. I still think it looks too big, even for a mutated spider monster. Um, but overall, I still think it's a cool figure, and I'm happy to have it to the collection. But as I said, that is it for the review. Make sure to hit that thumbs up if you like it. Make sure to subscribe for more content just like this. And as always, thanks for watching my video, and have a great day.